All right, folks, welcome back to Ugly Pug Forge. And that's what I finally decided to name my my forge. I don't know why, I'm just kind of cool. In this one, I'm going to do some canister Damascus. Here's my press, my little five-ton press that I made up. I had a little buddy help me out here. Uh, anyway, I come over to the press. I've got some canister here. I've already put it through the uh, through some dyes, the, oh, what do you call them? the V dies and you know, I can't remember anyway I put them through the dies and then on this one I have the half half round and then the other side is flat and I thought well I'll get a little press out of that and I did and it was actually you know pressing pretty pretty well here I'm putting that five ton press you can see how little it is um, but anyway it's putting it through its paces and, I, and it feels solid honestly it does yeah, my buddy made by Mr. Rowley. Anyway, um, got it done here. Stick it back in the forge. Now, I know you can't see this, but it is hotter than hot. Okay, it, it is forge welding temperature easily. It's just so bright outside that you can't really see how uh, the temperature. So what I do here, after I've gone through that process a few times, set it on the anvil. Get my hold down tool here. I've already hit the side that you see tap it down and then I'm going to take this big old 12 pound sledgehammer now this is fun let me tell you what yeah see that's what happens uh, the hold downs are actually pretty good but that thing is a 12 pound sledge puts a lot of power into it um, I'm giving it not here but before I just man I was rearing back and smashing that thing okay this is pretty amateur right here uh, I apologize for that but you know I will live through it uh, anyway, you see where the canister is smashed out the sides. Um, you know, it's coming loose. I've cut all, cut the canister off from this at this point. Um, it is still just orange, orange. I think it's forged welded together um, as far as heat goes, but it's probably, it's not drawn out. And so, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. Nobody does, you know. Anyway, I'm pretty much about ready to cry smashing on with my four pound hammer here um yeah, i need to go on a diet anyway hammering away there um good old times this is part of my exercise regimen okay i've got the rounding tong or the uh, bolt tongs um and now what this is made out of honestly is uh roller bearings and 1084 steel i had a friend give me some roller bearings these tongs are not for this. I've still got to build some more tongs. You never have too many tongs, right? Maybe I'll do a video where I make some tongs. How's that? Uh, bolt jaw tongs or some kind of tongs that hold this bigger can or uh, bigger three-quarter inch square tubing there. You can see where uh, that's still hot. I mean, you can still see the heat there even even in the broad daylight. <laughs> Well, welcome back. I'm going to show you guys kind of the end result of what happened here. Um, I started off with a bigger canister, right? I, I don't know. It was probably two and a half by two and a half. It was huge. What I filled it with were these roller bearings right here. Let me get closer and I'll show you what happened here. That's the one that you saw with the uh, that I was forging with the 12-pound sledge. Yeah, look at those gloves, man. Those are awesome. Anyway, um, just these roller bearings here, different sizes. This one's pretty pretty large. Uh, I stacked them up, put 1084 powder in there, and then force welded it together. Now this is what happened. Okay, this is this is a piece that I have here that I've cleaned off. Can't really see the pattern yet. I just barely put a quick etch on it, real quick. You can see one of the bearings right here. You can see that if it'll focus up on that. Anyway, um, but what had happened is the roller bearings, you can see a couple of little cracks, little inclusions right here on this. You can see them better right here. So the bearings were sitting this way. As a matter of fact, here's one here, kind of deformed, and that sat right in here. So like that, actually. Fit right in there. And so, when I opened that up and pounded the canister off, that broke. So, I'm going to stack this and uh, good learning curve. This one's together enough that I can make a knife out of it, this piece here. And so, 
it's probably half, maybe five inch, eight, five eighths inches thick. And so I can draw that out and make it make a decent knife out of that skinner. I've got two pieces of this, so what I'm gonna do is just stack that, um, alternate those, clean this all off, and then forge weld it again. Now what I would do in the future then with these roller bearings, I'd do a canister, but a canoe. So I put them in like this, and so when I mashed it down, then it mashed them flat on this plane, right, instead of lengthwise flat. Because that just left some voids in there. And it didn't go all the way through, but enough that I'm going to have to reforge weld it and uh, probably fold it a couple times just to make sure that it gets forge welded. Okay, that was the one I did yesterday. Good lesson learned there with roller bearings. If I ever need to do that again with roller bearings, I had a friend, neighbor, actually give me a bunch of, a bunch of roller bearings. So this morning, I uh, got a friend, he saw me struggling with my little five-ton press, and he said, hey, why don't you come on up? I got access to a hundred-ton press. Now, I don't know if you know, yeah, I'm an English teacher, okay, so uh, my math is not too good, but a hundred is more than five. I know that much, okay, so hundred-ton press, um, went ahead and did those same roller bearings in this, you matter of fact, you see one right, right there on the end that didn't quite take, kind of that same issue that we had, but all the rest of this is now one homogeneous piece. And so I put roller bearings, there's some uh, ball bearings in there too. Now the good thing about ball bearings is where they're the sphere, you know, the pressure is from all sides at once instead of, you know, uh, you wouldn't have this kind of thing happening, I don't think anyway, with a ball bearing. And so, you know, good lesson learned. I have to get online and order about 10,000 ball bearings if I'm gonna do stain, or uh, the canister again. I don't really know if I am, to be honest with you. It's kind of a, well, we'll see how it turns out when I, once I forge these out, but it's kind of a pain for the return. Um, if it looks amazing, that's great. If not, I'd probably just stack layers and then do a raindrop pattern and have something similar to the to the ball bearing canister. Um, and it seems a heck of a lot easier to me than grinding off that canister, hammering that stupid thing. Um, saying some choice cuss words sometimes, not that I would, but you know, some people, um, anyway, thinking some thoughts about canisters and melting them down, running over them with a D9 cat and then blowing them up with dynamite, you know, just, you know, normal kind of behavior here. Uh, and then while I was on that, 100 ton press, what I did is I took some, this is timing chain from a vehicle. And what I did here, um, I just cut it lengthwise to show kind of what happened. You can still see some, you know, you can see the links in there, the links from the car. Um, and you can see them on the side here where I didn't get as good of a squish as I wanted to. You know, that didn't really bother me that much. But, now, if you look in here, okay, on this, look inside there, if we get a bit of focus, there we go. Okay, see, on the inside here, we have a homogenous piece of steel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, clean this off, and flop it over on top of this one, forge weld that again. Okay, take this one, flip it over, so this side and this side are matching, I'm going to forge weld that, draw it out, I'll cut the one side off that's how ratty and nasty they'll get rid of a lot of these inclusions um get rid of a lot of that stuff and then i'll still have i mean that's five eighths inch thick and that's a good piece of steel through there um right here now what i did here is i put that on the 100 ton press and i pressed it a couple ways and then just you know squish that thing out um give me about once I got it up to heat, uh, maybe 10 minutes and three or four different, you know, squishes. And so most of it was actually just putting it back in the fire and waiting for, waiting for it to come up to temperature again. So honestly, man, <laughs> that press is the way to go. I was just absolutely amazed by it. Um, 
you know, my 5 ton press is just not cutting it. So I'm going to look for a 25 or 30 ton, which is a little less than the 100, but still way more effective than my freaking worn out arms and elbows. So uh, my, my arm hurts way less at the end of the day, of holding it in there and pushing the foot pedal down than it does swinging that, you know, 12 pound hammer or eight pound on a single hammer. So anyway, if you like this, uh, I'll keep you updated and, you know, show you the final product. I'll put an etch on it. I'm going to do some forging this weekend again. All right, here's some quick close-ups of the uh, canister Damascus there with the 12 pound sledge and my four pound hammer. I lift this picture up for a while longer just to uh, taking the canister off just because it took me a little bit longer so much fun there um, and in the end here you see the hero of the day the ten, the 100 ton press hey hit like hit subscribe share with all your friends um, thank you again for watching and I appreciate it I really really do here's the finished finished product um, well not finished product but here's the the product with uh, all ground smooth you can see that is one homogeneous piece anyway thanks again for watching watch all the others like and subscribe thank you